Hello everyone and welcome back to PAX and Recreation and today we're going back to the Bundle, Mani Bundle Saga or Bundle Mania Saga Let's go with Bundle Mania Saga So, as you know, we have been going through time and space doing all the bundles from Magic the Gathers history in reverse order Why in reverse order? Because the first ones are very difficult to, to find, and I'm trying to get them, and I have already some of them, but since, you know, I'm trying to be co a completionist, I'm trying to do it, like, you know, in a way that makes sense. So, we started the saga officially with um, uh, Mordor's Arcadal of Manor. Now, Mordor's Arcadal of Manor is the number one in the series, but it's not the first bundle we open. Because of that, I... and. Magic the Gathering always, and Wizards always releasing new, new sets and new, new sets. I don't have time to go back as much as I would like to. So we kept going forward. And then whenever I have the time, I go back. And again, we go forward and then I go back and then I go forward and then I go back and so on and so on and so on. So uh, go check the playlist. We have a playlist here because uh, I already did some other bundles before we started the Bundle Mania. So maybe it doesn't have the Bundle Mania intro. And my style is a little bit more shy because it was at the beginning of the channel. But you have the bundles there in case you are curious about like each bundle in history. So we have stuff there from uh, Firexial will be one, Wilds of Osrain, Lord of the Rings, etc. But there are some stuff that we missed because I couldn't find it. And now I have it. So we're going, we're still going back. We're going in chronological order. So counting everything that we did, now is the turn of Lord of the Rings. But what you may be thinking is, hmm. Didn't you already do a Lord of the Rings bundle unboxing? I, it feels like you did. And in, in fact, we did. Go check the playlist, go check that video. But what we couldn't do is the gift bundle edition. Now, if you want to see what's inside this, go watch the other video. I'm not going to open this one again, because not because I'm saving it or anything, but just because it's going to be boring for you to see the same thing again. But this one is different. I couldn't get my hands on this at the time and getting this was actually kind of difficult to be honest the reason why it was so difficult to get my hands on this back in the day was because of the one ring now whenever normally in case you are new to this the bundles have been getting less and less stuff as time goes by that's why we're going backwards to see how they had more stuff before and now they charge more and give us less for the same and plus, it's, also, it's always good to go like nostalgic and so on. So they, from a certain point onwards, that if my memory doesn't fail me, was Throne of Eldraine. I may be wrong, but I doubt it. Um, they started to include gift edition bundles or special edition bundles or collector edition bundles. It depends. Now, they started to call them gift edition bundles because Throne of Eldraine, if I recall correctly, released around the holiday season. And the logic for a gift bundle it's very stupid. I will prefer if they call them collector's edition bundle or whatever edition. For example, in the case of Phyrexia, they are called uh, the complete edition because of the completion process. And for Dustmorn, it's going to be called uh, Nightmare Edition or something like that, which is basically a special edition of the bundle. And they normally do that with bundles from IPs that they know they're going to sell a lot of, or from sets that release close to Christmas or holidays or whatever, because, you know, the idea is that this is a gift. Now, that's the name of it, but it's actually a lie, because gift edition bundles are more expensive and more difficult to find than normal bundles. So, unless you're going, you are already a Magic player, you're going to uh, uh, give this to another Magic player, is not going to happen that uh, normal people can just buy a gift bundle because the whole thing is skewed the wrong way so the name gift bundle is just wrong they should just call them whatever edition to be fun like in this case it's lord of the rings so it should be like i don't know uh, uh well it's, you have gandalf here so it will be like third day edition or or uh, Morning Star Edition, or the White Edition, well, the White Edition may be a bad name, but like the Ring Edition, although that would may be very dangerous. Why it was difficult to find this is because normally Gift Edition is the only thing that they have different, besides different packaging and a different uh, D20, is that they come with one collector booster. One. 
collector booster plus the normal boosters so they are more expensive by default like if a bundle is 40 bucks normally they sell this for 80 or something and in the case of those rings in case you don't remember because we are like more than a year uh, away from this now almost two uh, not almost two but more or less like this went by very fast and people went very crazy about it because the one ring was only in collector booster boxes and people and it wasn't appearing anywhere so people assume that since the gift bundles normally are released like a month after the the official release date of the set this was the one that included the one ring so that the popularity will be or, or the craze for the one ring will be alive for a month and then they will include it here and you know they have to sell a bunch of these and these are fairly expensive for what they have but Funnily enough, it wasn't the case, apparently. The One Ring was in a collector booster from a collector booster box. So, yeah. But people were selling this for a lot back then because it had a collector booster and, you know, the One Ring, guys, the One Ring. So that was the craze at the time. Now, um, the only thing that people can pull from collector boosters from the Lord of the Rings, the old ones, not the new ones, we have a difference on that. Go check that video. There are two different, yes, because they released a second set of collector boosters that don't have the serialized cards, but have some other heavy metal poster-like cards, which are like very weird. And they don't include the secret layer ones that are just screenshots from the Bashki movies. There is a lot of things wrong with this one. Uh, so maybe in these ones you can still pull, pull a serialized card, but it's like one collector booster, so it's impossible, right? So we're just doing this for the box and the die, and I guess from for completion's sake and for nostalgia. I guess so surprise you're super fun which is a lie because no one could buy these at the time and even less to gift anyone so i hate that they do this and i hate this name and this 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 insinuation that's like oh this is for your grandma to buy for you or for your girlfriend to buy for you is like no because unless you are in the inner world in the dark underbelly of the magic the gathering world you cannot get your hands on this unless you do like a pre-order and you know the owner of the store because they didn't have enough units of this and yada 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 so it's a perfect present for fans of magic like and lord of the rings alike it's such a like it's not a lie but it's just a lie that you can just get this now this is uh, still very worth it because it comes with the one ring not a super duper one ring but the card the one ring and this card although this is not my favorite version of the card um it's still very competitive and very uh, and used in a lot of formats because it's legal in all of them except standard so because it's a modern set so yeah and it's the one ring is and both our kishbow masters are overpowered so it is what it is so you get 20 traditional foil and 20 regular basic lands but no special treatments just lands a oversized gift edition is pinned down the the eight boosters so in this case it was eight not nine it was still when we had set boosters instead of play boosters remember that and the box and well the, the fourth card so this is one cool thing about earth rings it didn't come with one alt card it came with four that were like a little diorama of like sam frodo we're going to see it in a second. And it comes with one 15 card Lord of the Rings collector booster. So it's not the worst. Ironically enough, it doesn't say anything about the reference card. So, but it is there, I can assure you. And we're going to crack this open. Now, give me a second to find the other die. I have it right here. We're going to use it for comparison. Now let's open this and let's see the box. What's in the box? Now the, the, bo the box on the outside is fairly pretty, I have to say. And it's a shame that once you open them, you can't re-sleeve them in 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 the in the box wrapper because th these things happen, and they're just useless once you open them. But hey, you're here for the cardboard box, not for the cardboard cover. And there is an insert here. The insert is different. You can go see the other one in the other video. But let's see. The insert is an invitation to. Um, Bilbo's birthday. I don't know half of half of as much as I should like, and I like less than half of you half as much as you deserve. So, very good, not bad. And this illustration of Gandalf that is kind of Asian for some reason, and doing the the fireworks, which is the the fireworks card. It's called the Wizards Fireworks or something like that. Not bad. It's not 100% like flimsy paper. It has some consistency to it, but you know, it is what it is. It's not a poster or anything. Now the box. What's in the box? The box is nice. You can see that it's already, 
it has some marks because of how the box is done, because it was protected by the other box, so it shouldn't happen. The normal box, which, again, go see the other video, was more like Mount Doom uh, from the inside. And here you have, uh, which I'm going to maybe say the name wrong, but I'm assuming that's Baradur. Yeah, falling apart and you have the, the eagles um, taking away Sam and Frodo. Uh, as they go back and this is one of those that is like the full piece of art around the box instead of like the, the art repeating twice and Lord of the Ring tells from Middle Earth above which is not bad it's kind of you know it's more like serene but it's the end of everything so I guess that fits now this is from that era where we still had the box for the boosters um, you ha we have the sleeve and this was a different sleeve because it has it had this hole on it to fit the box. This is all legacy now, folks. We are in 2024, and yet this is legacy. Crazy how Wizards just keeps removing stuff from bundles. Um, now, a divider, not a bad looking one. You can go check the art for the other. And Gandalf, which I swear to you, I didn't know this was the art, but I picked this playmat for this video, and it's the same art, so it's great. And there you go. Not much here, nothing to go crazy. No, no one's going to buy the bundle for that. Now, the die. Interestingly enough, I think this is easier to read than the other die. Let me just cover Gandalf's face, because something I realized is that when the playmat has a face, the camera goes crazy. So, um, see that? There is like particles in there, which is cool, because this is, this is the Mount Doom one, I guess. So it's like lava and the ring and all that. Like, not bad. I like it quite a lot. It's very pretty. I... Do I prefer it to this one? Well, to a degree, like, I, I love how this die looks, which is the, the normal one from the normal bundle. I love how it looks, very elvish, um, very elvish and, you know, overall very cool. But, and technically, it's not the same decoration around the numbers, but this one makes the numbers more difficult to read, I think. Or maybe it's the color contrast. The fact is that I love how this die looks, but I never use it because every time I need to throw it, I need to be like, uh, and because the numbers are not that easy to read. These ones seem easier to read, but I can tell you right away, it's not going to be also like my number one die to throw around because yeah, but it's very pretty. And the trans the transparent type of die with the embers inside is kind of cool. Similar to the one in, um, uh, the, the the amber one from Jurassic Park, from that bundle, again, see the playlist, or or the one from Thunder Junction that looked like an explosion or something, I don't know what the logic for that one was, but, you know, not bad, actually pretty pretty, so the die, but, you know, who buys this specifically for the die, I mean, sometimes I do, but you do it for the cards, now there is that, remember the box, remember the box, so there is that, our lovely little box, and... The lands, the promos, and some lands, the collector booster, and some of the set boosters. Remember set boosters? There you go. I, w I don't miss them as much as you may think, because set boosters, uh, like that that whole SQ division is just horrible. Um, let's just open this, I guess, for you to see. So, before we open boosters, paper wrappers so the basic lands nothing crazy you already know these ones no special treatments no anything it's just lot of the rings um lands and uh, this is all the normal ones like the there are no foils in here the two reference cards guys they were not missing remember and um it feels like it should be wait am i blind or something no no it has to be in the other one so you have all the colors here, you have like four copies of each, which is something that we are also getting less of nowadays, believe it or not. Um, so I'm going to put the lands here, which is where we're going to put them. And then for the promos, ironically enough, the alt card here doesn't change. Like in their defense, these cards, look at, look at that. I just, I literally just opened them. Like they're already banned by default. Like in their defense, this was fairly generous for what's normal in a in a bundle, and the One Ring is a very valuable card uh, because it's broken. But um, the the art doesn't change between the gift bundle and the normal bundle. Normally, the this, the special alt promo 
that comes with with gift and non-gift bundles um the, <laughs> sorry Gandalf, you can't see otherwise the camera goes crazy um the art is different but here is just the same as the normal bundle which again they gave four cards which they normally give one so you know it's it's okay again this is not my favorite one ring but it has golem on it so it's kind of kind of tells the story there so you have the four promos that you know the, the, the mini diorama thing and then you have two and two in foil which again is more than what we get right now and uh, a very bad foiling process which i just remember that it was the case for lord of the rings so boy does it suck so <clears throat> white white black colorless okay should we put them in the spot uh, why not let's put them in the spot um, as they normally are so white white black and colorless so there is that now let's open the boosters and yes we're going to open the collector booster last oh this was an easy one to open we're not going to we're not hoping for any crazy pulls here remember um the the point of the normal boosters is just to well as they say as they said back then with the set boosters is just to have fun art cards which nowadays they are a lot more difficult to get um, normal land banished from Edoras again this is not like the second wave of Lord of the Rings cards that they did this is the original one the OG so there is no special treatment or anything it's just the cards that you're already used to and these are normal boosters so nasty end in full art and ooh fi feel, file file of Galadriel uh, is a rare and then the foil is Glorfindel which a lot of people don't know who he is because he's not in the a movie and oh there's a card from the list rain of daggers destroy all your opponent creatures for each creature destroyed this way you lose to life and that bold text right there went crazy so not bad uh, i'm going to just put the green there just to because gandalf is making me go crazy so yeah cards from the list that was another one i one thing i have to tell you i am not like if we need to have boosters i prefer that we have like two types of boosters like the normal boosters that you play with and come with stuff and the collector boosters which is you pay more if you want and you get a special treatment so like that's my my jam that's what i you know it feels fair doesn't confuse people everything is simplified you know but so i'm not that sad uh, me with bats not bad i'm not that sad that they oh saron the dark lord let's go i'm not that sad that they uh kick to the curb the now this this i hate they just add the cards it's just like give me a token on the other side like what i'm supposed to do with this i hate these cards like with a passion it's like i'm already buying magic don't give me an ad for magic like uh, at least make it an ad for baldur's gate 3 or or for the rings of power in this case or something even though rings of power sucks but so <clears throat> going back to what i was saying um the set the the you know the set boosters one thing that they had good is that you know they they were for fun so you know you had like the stuff in there right like you had like oh there's always an art, an art card which a lot of people didn't care for but i love them because they're actually like collectible cards not playable ones but just you know because i i back in the day i collected like marvel cards and so on one of these days if you guys want i can do a video on those um because those were the like my first trading cards ever and have a lot of them i have a big collection of them from marvel and you know the ah, what was the name of the company that did them Fleer ultra i think it was oh legolas master archer not bad um like i have a lot of that uh that was my oh where's gearhawk another one from the list i have a lot of that from that time in my life so uh, that's why i don't dislike art cards plus you know art is really deserve some appreciation because this game couldn't exist without artists like you know carries over the everything i will say um but <clears throat> set boosters you had a art card and most of the time you had an extra thing so you had a foil and sometimes you had a wide uh, full art card which is the case for a lot of the rings not for all sets so you had a full art here which can be any type of card then you have a there's a special treatment here and that is the rare or mythic aragorn company leader and then you have a foil right and that that multiplies your chances of getting something cool and sometimes you get a token but 
I love it when we get a card from the list. I kid you not, I think cards from the list, um, and it's a shame that they are, because now Play Boosters, the, the extra slot has to compete with everything in, in Magic. So it can be a token, it can be a an art card, it can be a card from the list or from the guest stars or whatever. Um, so now it's, they are less common, but every time, like when you do like this with a booster, and you see this, you know already. But when you do this with a booster and you see the back of a magic card, you get excited because it's like, oh, 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 is that a card from the list? And a card from the list always feels like a like a bonus track. Like, like you feel like you're getting an extra card that you are not supposed to. And since they are from the list, it's always cards from magic's history. So it's always cool to see them, right? And sometimes they are very good reprints and very cool cards. So, you know, I... I like the list. And for Wizards, it's whatever. I know that, again, they treat this as an economy, but still, it was a cool, it's a cool economy thing, at least for my brain. I go look and see, like, oh, okay, this is going to be a cool card, because except with sets with double-sided cards, like Innistrad and so on, because whenever you get the back of a Magic card, you know, like, like this, you're like, yay, crazy! And it can be just one of those placeholder cards where you write which card it is when you have a, a double-sided card. So that was a, a sucky one. Um, <clears throat> but overall, I overall I just like... It's funny that I'm talking about set boosters. Like, you know, it's like, oh, this that meant that much time ago, remember set boosters? It's like, it's not even a year, but still. It changes so much the, the dynamic of opening boosters and, and the game itself. But not only the game itself, the market itself, and like how you perceive value of some types of cards changes a lot with this. Um, because you, you think about cards in one way or another, depending on how easy it is for you to get them as a normal human without having to buy singles. Like, for example, foils, they are not... See, like... Magic card back, so card from the list, great already. Ooh, the card from the starter kit, which we have a video on, by the way. So go check that one as well. Um, overall, it feels like I don't know. I like it that they keep changing stuff, so that it keeps you know it keeps feeling fresh. I prefer that they simplify stuff, so like the less booster types, the better. But you can't help but wonder, right, and be like, hmm, was it better? Ooh, Mount Doom. There you go. Nice. So we're getting some, you know, fairly good pulls. Like, nothing, you know, nothing to go crazy about, but, like, you know, fairly good pulls. And Mother Slug. Also, one thing that I like about the list cards, and, like, please someone correct me if this is not the case, but a lot of times, when you get the cards from the list, um, it feels like they will try to make them fit like another one uh, they will try to make them fit the theme of the set like for example look at this this seem like creatures from the lord of the rings or things that could happen in lord of the rings sometimes they match mechanically the set but a lot of times it's just cards that feel like they could be in that set like um and in eldraine it was like cards that could be like just enchantments and and uh, just whimsical fairy tale cards and here is like okay elves ogres Stuff that is in the Lord of the Rings, so it doesn't feel that away, right? So, I don't know, there's some charm to the list cards. Uh, maybe it's just me. Nasty End, not bad, and let's see. Gandalf the Grey, Coolio. Coolio, Coolio, Coolio. Frodo Baggins in Showcase, and Mishra's Self Replicator. Now, does this feel in the Lord of the Rings? Uh, maybe, because it's an assembly worker. So maybe it's a reference to, to the, you know, to the, to the Black Tower and the creation of the, of the, or I don't know, maybe of the Urukai. I don't know. And now, last but not least, Collector Booster. And at the end, I'm going to say like, oh, was it? Is it worth it to buy a? Uh, the answer is not. Uh, it was. It was not back in the day, and it is not right now for sure, because it's either the same price or more expensive. And I can tell you that that's not worth it at all. So let's see. Willow Wind in foil. Inherited Envelope in foil. Everything is in foil. Galadrian's Guide. And they feel very silky. Nimble Hobbit. 
The Grey Havens, not bad. Gimli, Counter of Kills. It's a shame that most Gimli cards are just meh. And now the Swamp, and after this, the actual party starts. So let's see what pools can we get. So Shagrat Lootbearer. Okay, not bad. In foil, in foil arena. Forge a new again, but this time in full art. Model of Unity from the Commander decks. Not bad. Gimli Counter of Kills twice in the same booster. Come on. Ooh, Tom Bombadil. Okay, not bad, not bad. I'm not going to write home about it, but, you know, not bad. It's a great commander. I will say it's the only commander for sagas. Uh, so, not bad. And let's see what else is in it. Knights of Dol Amroth, which I don't hate this card, but I do have a tendency to hate them because they are common and they are one of the few commons that are full art in this set. Like, is this one and two more? I don't remember the others. So you get this card quite a lot because they it occupies the, the, the full art space in a lot of boosters. So it's just like... Ugh. And Pippin's Bravery in foil. So not bad. I think there is another one. Yep, there is an extra one. Let's see the token first. So food and spirit. Not bad. Pippin's Bravery. And I can tell you there's not going to be a, a ring or anything. So sorry to disappoint. But it is Faramir. Prince of Ethelion, which is, you know, not bad. It's my boy Faramir. Faramir gets such a bad rep, but as a commander, it's kind of okay. At the beginning of your end step, choose an opponent. At the beginning of that player's next end step, you draw a card if they didn't attack you that turn. Otherwise, create three 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens, see? So blue-white, this is a, you know, very interesting commander to build around, but doesn't have like a gimmick. It's just like a very good thing to have around. Um, you know, so it is what it is. And that's the collector's bundle. Now, to recap, what you get, oh, sorry, the gift bundle. What you get besides a bunch of lies about how this is the perfect gift for your super fan, which is not true. Uh, well, the usual, right? You get some counters, some dividers, some mini dividers. They look nice, but again, nothing to go super crazy about. You get an insert that's kind of cool, but that's it. At least you can frame this if you want, which is not that bad, I guess. Like, for example, I will frame this, like, a, you know, a small frame and put it in a wall or something. This one, maybe, but not as much because they do pick one side to just put all the logos and stuff and it kind of ruins the art. But in this one, there's only the artist name, so, you know, it will be cool to, to have lying around. And then the box, uh, which, remind, remember, this one comes with a smaller box. Um, the box art, well, this is subjective. I like this one. I don't know if I prefer it to the other one with the with all the lava and all that stuff. This is, like, more calm. It, it, it does give this vibe of, like, it's the end. It's over, right? So it's cool. If you like the Lord of the Rings for the sake of completion, of, you know, of com completing a collection and all things Lord of the Rings, it's not about art, and I think it tells a story. But, you know, subject to preference. And then you get eight boosters, set boosters, and one collector booster, which, you know, everything that you saw is random. Besides that, you get a bunch of lands, which are okay. At least these are more lands than the ones we get nowadays. We get less lands. And you get the four special cards for Frodo, Sam, uh, Gollum, and more importantly, the one ring, which everyone is after. And last but not least, my favorite part of all bundles, which is the oversized d20 i like it a lot i don't know if it's going to be my favorite one to play with but certainly one to display because it has the colors if the other one was a very elvish one because I, it's about the beginning of the journey or something this is about the end of the journey and it has like those particles inside that it's like lava and so on so not bad let me know down below what you think about this bundle did you get this bundle back in the day or would you get it if you could right now if you're a fan of, of lord of the rings like please remember all the cards are random so there are only a few constants i don't think this was worth 80 plus bucks as it was back in the day just because of that one booster that maybe had the one ring because it wasn't the case uh, obviously hindsight is 2020 but still people went very crazy about this fairly fast but hey, that's just the video. So thank you very much for watching. Have a great time. And I see you next time on PAX and Recreation. Bye.